on 19 Keys, and this is high level conversation. Yeah. I feel like that's an app we should talk about building because it's sure. not that hard to build. No, we should. It's not that sure. hard to build. Like, we did this shit with Google with these, this eye hospital out, out in uh, the UK, and these dudes, like, they were so bad at tech because they're training to be eye doctors. Yeah. All their passwords, I was like, I said, all y'all passwords are password, huh? <laughs> Some of y'all just got the, the dollar signs instead yeah. of the S's, huh? Yeah. They immediately was like, oh, so you got uh-huh. the hacker? <laughs> so we put them on this auto email and they ended up like chaining it how to like uh tell they were looking for like signs of diabetic retinopathy which is when you get diabetes signs that you're gonna go blind in mm-hmm. your eyes so they had all these images and they figured out these dudes who couldn't even come up with a complex password they ended up putting it up in there figuring out how to train it they trained the model just clicking and then they used uh this explainability tool to figure out why it did and then they found a novel scientific discovery mm. on it. And these are dudes who literally, like, I had to show them how to, like, log into the Google Cloud admin console or, like, how to open up the terminal on their computer, like, completely non-technical. And so we're at that age where if you have the knowledge and the wisdom and an idea, the platforms are out there for you to bring them into life and to fruition. Mm-hmm. The biggest gap for our communities is the knowledge of how to do so in an accessible, culturally relevant way. Mm-hmm. Y'all don't want to sit up here and hear me talk about it. And then the model weights, when you readjust the model weights in the neural Man. network, your linear algebra formula, like, y'all don't want to hear that. Man, I've, I'm not, I've is. tried to train myself on a lot of different things. And because they're so out of, first of all, it's, the reason I'm training myself has I have no passion in the research because this part, for whatever customization way my brain is made, doesn't care. So it becomes boring to me. It becomes just literally information. And I can sometimes get through the harshness of super boring information to get to the point of cultivating an understanding and then build on top of that. But I know how hard that must be for the average person, especially in today's time. We start talking about all this technology and stuff. And it's like, number one, people, the average person has a learning disability from school. Right. So they pick up new information and like, man, this is hard to learn. So it lowers their self-esteem and then they create this attachment to where they dislike the information and then dislike the industry connected to the information because I don't know it. I don't like it. If you understood it, then you would. So that's where I've seen people in like different creative and conscious communities that, yeah, these people have always been brilliant, but the interface of these systems have never been created in a way where they can translate that brilliance Mm -hmm. right into output, into action. But they have always been the storytellers of the world. They've always been the futurists and the thought leaders of the world. And it's been beautiful to see that bridge getting slower and lower and lower as new technologies come out and they can build their brand. Now the design looks good. The aesthetic is right, right? Mm-hmm. They got these funnels. They got systems. They got infrastructure. And I'm like, man, this is beautiful to see because I seen this person that was built brilliant, but they've been broke so long because they couldn't translate that. Mm-hmm. And that's really, I mean, we know that's by design. Mm -hmm. You know, when you look at computer science, the language is all in the language of mathematics and they explain things in ways that are unnecessarily complicated. Mm. So even to just really build like an AI model from scratch requires linear algebra. Mm. To get the linear algebra, you got to take calculus one, two, three, discrete mathematics, then linear algebra. Mm. Sound fun. It's, it was not fun. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? To get all the way up there. I had a tutor in every class. I was paying. I was like, bit. and then when I finally get the concepts, I'd be like, why didn't they just say it like right. that? So, for example, you, you, you program it in any language. The way that you store a list of items inside of a, a, of a computer, a, of a coding language is called an array. Mm. I ain't never in my goddamn life except outside of an old 50s movie, heard somebody say, well, there's a wide array of things. Mm -hmm. I've got an array that go to the grocery store. No, it's I got a list. You call it a list. Why are you calling it something else? Call it a list. I think it's, yeah, it's done on purpose. You outside of the club. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're using this language that could be simplified, but if we do that, more people understand it. Mm-hmm. Now we're not so special f- because it's like being a part of a secret society. A secret society is you got your own language. You have a special set of knowledge that people outside of it don't have access to. Mm-hmm. So now it's intentionally made to create this barrier. So you have to go through these rituals, right, of utilizing our language, even though it's not the best way for you to learn. 
And the problem with that is people who automatically come from a culture that is going to have an easier time learning it. People outside of that is going to be harder. But they actually probably way smarter than you because they have to go through way more to learn a language that's outside of their cultural biases mm -hmm. or however you will say that. But for me, that's why I like the times you're living in. And like you said, it's, it's rewriting the languages of the programming languages of everything. Mm -hmm. Right. Everybody wants to sound smart. Right. And it's like people that get degrees, they use the language that only you know. And no, I'm not going to simplify it. I want you to know you ain't got my level of education, right? But you might not have that level of intelligence to be able to simplify it as well, mm -hmm. right? And this is a time when we get to put everything in the language needed for that person to learn. And it's all these barriers come down, mm -hmm. right? And people are not going to like that because with those barriers, those social statuses that you have to where you can say, I belong to this club and you don't, aha, you can't say that no more. No, nope. nope, I didn't go to school for coding, but guess what? I got way better ideas than you and I bet I can make better apps than you. Now, it has nothing to do with my skill set to learn the language of Python, right? It has everything to do with my ability to be able to think about processes and creativity and to be able to give that command language so that it can be programmed fully, right? Now, I'm going to teach you how to create design for my taste, right? So now, it's automatically going to look better, right? <laughs> I'm going to then take my knowledge of psychology and design and branding and marketing and, and now you can't even compete with me, mm -hmm. right? So that is the empowering of the hood. You know what I mean? That is empowering of individuals who have creative intelligence, mm. but that creative intelligence has never truly been valued. Creativity by the world has never been given a true metric of value it deserves. Mm. And this is a time where creatives get empowered. So yeah, I want to create that app. I won't create that app specifically for people who don't know nothing about it, but who have the best ideas and they can build wealth for their family as they was only able to get them out with. Let's do it. That's easy. I'm like already my head. I'm like the interface could be this and then there'd yeah. be a large language model plugged in that they could yeah. ask it questions to this trained on strategy. And then we could plug in a design thing that would give it like a brand framework. Like I'm already, already gone. Right. And then yeah. over time, you know, there was this group I work with called indigenous AI mm. and it was this collective that would get together groups of indigenous leaders from all over the world. And they would do meetings about the implications of AI on their society and on their practices. And out of that group, I met these kids at, a, I think it was the university of Hawaii who were making a programming language on top of Python that was in their indigenous tongue. That's beautiful. And so I wonder if there's like a version of that, that we could create mm -hmm. as well. Cause there will be some advanced things that someone needs to know how to code. But mm -hmm. what if instead of array, we, we have like a version, it's like, we call it a list mm -hmm. instead of a variable, which is the thing that holds the data. We call it a bucket. Mm -hmm. You're right. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like if instead of an error, we call it sus. Like we we come up with, and it's just re is rewrapping that right. Like I remember a couple of years ago there was someone who went viral, and I think it was either Hacker News or Reddit because they were trying to make a slang based version of Python, but it came out it was all white dudes mm. who were doing it, and they were doing it as a joke. Mm. So what happens if we actually build like our own programming language for real, right? And teach from that, right? Right? Like these are things that. Now that I ain't a Google no more, these are things I can actually work on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's that's what we need. And that's because I think that's why a lot of people be afraid of the tech. They're like, man, we never going to be able to do what the people who got degrees can do with it. So why would they embrace it if they stuck being a consumer of it and never the producer? Here's the thing, though. I ain't got no degrees. I got a GED. And then I went to community college, so I got my little standard, you mm -hmm. finish your two years. I dropped out of UC Berkeley twice. I never finished. Mm, congratulations. The degrees are not what makes you smart. I, I tried to go back later when I was in, like a little older adult, and I sat in the classroom and said, I don't need to sit here and play this game with this professor who is like ego tripping and making jokes about how mm -hmm. Yale isn't as good as Berkeley and high key flirting with the little, a little 19 year old in the front mm -hmm. of the seat trying to prove he prove that he has more knowledge and make us scared about a test that's multiple choice. Like, what is my time here for? Mm -hmm. And one thing I'll say is, you know, I just literally yesterday received an award from UC Berkeley. It's the first award ever for tech integrity mm. for civil society, using tech to change society. And I sat on a panel that was moderated by the former president of UC Berkeley. And it's a woman on the panel who was in the law school. It's another woman who's like something over cybersecurity. There's a computer science professor there with me. And I'm listening to these people talk. 
about what they think is needed to make AI responsible. And I'm listening to this person say, well, you know, I do human rights impact assessments, which is where you like guess how a model might impact someone's human rights. And she says, she says something along the lines of, you know, it's not hard. All you got to do is get a couple people in the room together and you could think about it because we're all human. And I'm like, this person has never worked on a commercial AI at production scale. You've never actually worked on an AI that has touched billions of people. Mm -hmm. So you don't know how absurd that sounds, that you think that you could get together five people who just happen to be human and think of the needs and the complexes of eight billion people <laughs> in this world from a checklist. But I could imagine a corporation would love that because now, you know, it decreases their accountability whatsoever. Yeah, we, we hired her, came in, she did her assessment, said, hey, minimum impact on human rights. Thank you. But even then, when your product actually hurts people in other regions, you're still accountable. So mm. that's a checklist and an assessment they, is not they a They billion dollars in by that time where they get a smack with a fine and they feel good. Not just a fine, you get smacked with Gen Z and Gen Alpha not using your products no mm. more because they remember that you had black people looking like gorillas. Mm. That you had us tired as gorillas and they say, we don't want to use Google. We'll go search on TikTok instead, mm. which is what's happening. TikTok's eating search business for, you know, that's Google's bread and butter is right. their search. It's killing YouTube, it's killing search, it's killing Instagram, it's killing Meta, it's killing Snapchat, because we'd rather just go to TikTok mm. and search for what we need. Tick tock, tick tock, time is up. And so we're just, just being dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a little too acoustic for that. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta add your dramatics in there. <laughs> Information is everywhere. You can log into YouTube right now and type in almost any subject. But I'm gonna be honest with you, you won't even know if it's human generated or if it's just based on the algorithm that figured out that you wanted to find this subject and queried your information, created an automated process so they can get your eyeballs to try to sell you a product or get advertisement dollars. Humans need humans. We don't work and operate that well learning from machines because it's the connection to the information, it's the connection to the process that allows us to grow our neurons, it's that connection that allows us to be able to tap into that tapestry of thought to where we need to learn and be in environments to where we feel aspirational and we are inspired and it's empathetic. So today it's not about just having access to the information, it's not just about being able to have democratized education everywhere, it's about connection. Are you actually connected to it? When you are in a community, it reinforces that environment of connection. And that's why being a part of high level is so important. So you are reinforcing an environment with that human connection. I see you, you see me, you feel felt, you want to learn. Information and data, statistics and numbers and automation is fine, especially if you want to create income and utilize the technology for such. But human connection has always been a real source of learning. Been a real source Don't of just go for the information. Go for the community and go for the connection. Tap in with the guy. I'm 19 Keys and this is high level conversation.